Hi guys, um, Terry here again. Um, in this video, I'm going to be looking at the solution to question 5 in the January 2022 paper for CSEC physics, right? Um, Alright, so question 5. So we have a solenoid. Okay, so in question five here, right, um, we have a solenoid. Um, a solenoid is essentially a coil of wire, right, and we have a current I flowing through this coil of wire. Figure six shows a cross section representation of the solenoid, and they, they give us two symbols. This represents the current coming out of the paper, and this represents the current going into the paper, right? Now that's typically the symbols that we use. So what we're gonna do here now so they want us to draw the magnetic field lines inside and around the solenoid. Now, for a solenoid, right, at the center of the solenoid, right, the field line is going to look, uh, one second, I'll try to draw this a little better here, right, um, ideally we should use a ruler at least the start of this diagram, right, and this is what we're going to have here. So the field lines does something like this around the solenoid. Right? So the same thing is going to happen across here as well. Right? So we can put a, a little more lines here if we want to. Right, so this is what the field lines look like. Now, the next thing we have to decide the direction of the field. That's important. We need to put that on my diagram, right? Now, to do that, I'm going to use my right hand grip rule, right? Now, remember, they told us about how the current is flowing here, right? Um, at the coils on top, the current is flowing out of the paper, and at the bottom, it's flowing um, into the paper. So, you're going to use your right hand grip rule, right? And when you do that, remember these fingers here point in the direction of the electric current. And your thumb is going to point in the direction of the north pole on the diagram. Right? That's what's going to happen. Now, in this case, if we look at this carefully and use your right hand grip rule, what's going to happen is that this side is going to be a north pole and this side is going to be a south pole. So what that means is that your field lines are going to point this way. Right, your field lines are going to point this way. Right, so we're getting three marks just for drawing that. Right, and the key point here is the field lines themselves and the direction of the field. In part B, now, um, the figure shows a constant magnetic field coming out of the surface, right, indicated by that symbol. Figures seven and eight show a straight metal wire moving across the magnetic field. Right, so we have a conductor AB moving across a magnetic field. In figure eight, we also have a conductor going across a magnetic field. Right, so basically, this question here is about um, electromagnetic induction. And the key thing here is that when a conductor cuts a magnetic field, an EMF is induced across the ends of the conductor. Right, so they gave us so this first diagram, this is one movement, the second diagram is a second movement. And then in the third diagram, figure 9, they said the metal wire is moving parallel to the magnetic field that is out of the surface, right? So we have three different scenarios, and what they want us to do, complete the table, and they want us to show two things. The direction of the induced current in the um, straight metal wire, and how the magnitude of the current would change if the speed of the wire is double. So let's go to the table now. 
So figure seven, the first thing we want to know, what is the direction of the induced current in the metal wire? So that is figure seven. Let's go back here. Now to predict this, what we need to do, we need to use our, um, our right hand rule here. Now don't confuse the right hand rule with the left hand rule. The left hand rule is used for the DC motor and the right hand rule is used for electromagnetic induction. So this is your right hand, right? Your, um, this here, your thumb points in the direction of the movement, right? Your index finger points in the direction of the field and your second finger points in the direction of the induced current. Now, in this scenario here, the, the current is coming out of the paper. So it's coming towards you, right? That's the direction, sorry, not the current, the, um, the magnetic field, sorry, is coming towards you. So your index finger needs to point towards you and you are moving upwards. So if you're moving upwards, right? Now you, it's hard for me to show you this here, but if the wire is moving upwards, it means that the current has to be flowing from A to B, right? That is what's supposed to be happening. The current, current must be flowing from A to B, right? So therefore, all we're gonna say here on our chart, um, from A to B, right? That's the direction of the induced current. Now they said, what happens to the magnitude of the induced current when the speed is double, right? So if you are doubling your speed, that means the rate at which you are cutting the field lines is going to increase as well. So what we expect to happen is the current should double, right? So the current doubles, right? So the faster the conductor moves in the magnetic field, the, the larger the magnitude of the induced EMF, right? Now let's go to figure eight now. What's happening in figure eight? So in figure eight, you have the conductor going across the magnetic field like that, right? So we're gonna use our right hand rule again. So the current is coming out towards you. The force is moving, um, right, so it's like this, right? And if we look at our finger here, it's still moving A to B in that direction, right? Again, it's going from A to B. Right? Or we can say downwards if you want. Right? This one was, um, what was that one again? I was moving to the right. Right? Now in this case here, what happens in magnitude of the current? Again, it's going to double. Right? And let's see what happens in figure 9 now. Uh, figure nine, you have something different. What happened, what's happening here is that the conductor is moving parallel to the magnetic field. What happens there is that magnetic field lines are not being cut, right? So if magnetic field lines are not being cut, then there is not going to be any current. So there, you're going to say no current flows. Right? And if we um, increase the speed, right, we're going to get no change. Right? So nothing happens there in figure nine. Now this part here, now we have an ideal step down transformer, right? It has, so we need to write down what is given to us here. So the number of turns in the primary is 1980. Um, and 180 turns in the secondary. So number of turns in the secondary is 180. And the maximum theoretical output voltage, that's what they want us to find. If the input voltage, so your voltage in your primary is 1320 volts. And we're going to use our transformer equation, which is NP over NS is equal to VP over VS. Right? Number of turns in the primary is 1980 over 180 is equal to the voltage in the primary, which is 1320 over VS. If I cross multiply, I'm going to get 1980 VS is equal to 1320 multiplied by 180. So therefore VS is equal to 1320 by 180 all over 1980. So your voltage in the secondary here is going to be 1320 by 180 divided by 1980 and I'm going to get 120 volts. Right, I'm getting 120 volts. The next part, calculate the input current 
sorry, the input power, if the current is 135, flows in the primary. So your input power, PI, is equal to IP multiplied by VP, your current in the primary by the voltage in the primary. So this here is 135 multiplied by the voltage in the primary, which was 1320. And that's going to give me 135 multiplied by 1320. And I'm going to get 178200 volts. Right? I'm oh, sorry, not volts. In this case here, it is power, so it's watts. Right? Yeah, this is what's it. Right? So this brings us to the end of question five. Right? So like I said, hit um, like and don't forget, subscribe to my channel. Right? Um, also, those interested in CSEC physics online classes. Right? Um, you can WhatsApp me at this number here. Right? Um, my new Form 4 class will start in August. Right? And currently, I'm preparing my Form 5 class to write exam next month. Right? Take care, guys.